guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today I want to talk about mailing fabric postcards, specifically if you purchase one from my shop. When you receive your fabric postcard, you're not only going to receive the postcard you chose, you're also going to receive a adhesive shipping label and also an adhesive clear envelope. Now normally when you have a postcard, you can write the little address over here and you can write your message here. Then you put your stamp on it and it goes off like that. Now you can do that with a fabric postcard, but because it is made out of fabric and there's pieces for the machine at the post office to get hooked up on and to cause issues, the post office won't ship it just like this. They like to have it either hand stamped or they prefer that you put it in an envelope. The whole point of a fabric postcard is not only for the recipient to see something beautiful in their mailbox when they open their mailbox, but also for anyone along the way as it's being shipped from location to location that they can see it. And finally, your mailman. Maybe they might get a, maybe having a bad day and they see the little fabric postcard and it might bring them a little bit of joy. So with the way I make these, my plan for you, and you can do this any way you want, of course, as I do put the line in the center and I do sign it like a regular fabric postcard, you can leave your message on here. You can turn it this way and leave an entire message. You can write it down this column and this column any way you want, or you can leave it blank. I tend to leave mine blank. And the reason of that is when you have something that is nice, that is more like a piece of art, it's going to be handed around to people and other people are gonna see it. And maybe you don't want to send this postcard to grandma and have all of her friends in the community read some type of a message you put. Or maybe you do, it's totally up to you. At this point, it's your fabric postcard, you can do as you wish, right? So it all depends on what level of privacy you want. And I figure a lot of times with these, I'm going to either hang them up on my wall. I like to put mine in a picture frame. I just pick these up at the Dollar Tree. They have this plastic wood-like. I leave the glass in. And if your fabric postcard is smaller than the frame you purchase, you can always put a piece of fabric or construction paper or cardstock in the back. I use some red cardstock and I just set that in here. You could put some double stick tape and that way it gives it a nice frame and it makes it look like a piece of art. Many people just like to put these in a little bowl or a container somewhere in their living room. And then anyone who wants to, they can come back and look at it kind of like a picture album that you would have for your family. So if it's something you want to look back on and look at them over and over, they might not want to have some type of message on it. So in that case, I suggest taking, you can use a computer paper or a regular note paper or just one of these small little legal pads and you can write your message on here. That way grandma has that nice message or something you want to write to your friends. Maybe you want to put a recipe on here and then you can send that with your fabric postcard. So let me show you how to get these all packaged up and ready to go in the mail. So you're gonna either leave this blank or you're gonna put your message on it. You do not have to put any type of stamps or address or anything on it like that because we're gonna go ahead and put it in our cellophane envelope. And this is gonna help protect it a little bit from maybe the rain or the snow. Or if your mailman is anything like mine, my packages always come with a footprint on it. They just kind of toss things around in the back of the truck or they just put them in their little boxes and things get dusty and dirty. So this way you don't have to worry about any dirt, snow, rain, or possibly some type of grease or maybe your mailman's lunch getting on it. So I lay it down so that my adhesive is to the right and my opening is on the top. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but here's the little opening right there. I'm gonna take my fabric postcard. It doesn't really matter if you have it right side up or upside down, because once we get it all sealed, it's going to be on the other side of your address. It can be flipped around. So I just wanna make sure the good side is facing down and I'm gonna slide it into my envelope. I'm gonna go ahead and push it all the way down to the bottom. There's going to be a little extra up here at the top that we're gonna fold that over. There's no real guarantee that this is going to protect it from too much, but I feel like with that little extra, that if we fold it over, it's going to help keep any raindrops from getting down in there. I know the chances of it falling into a puddle might be rare, but I'm not sure how much it's gonna withstand being in a puddle, but we do wanna protect these as much as we can when they're going through the machine and such. Now, if you wrote a note or a recipe on it, you wanna go ahead and add that right here. Now doing it this way is also going to keep whatever message you might want to write on this card, it's gonna keep it private. It always bothered me when I put a postcard out in the mail that even though I'm just writing, I wish you were here and we miss you, please check my mail or take the dog out. I always 
thought that people were going to be constantly turning over my postcard and reading it. I know that might be just a little paranoid, but I like to keep my messages to my friends and family private. By doing it this way, no one's going to be able to see it. Now you can put your note on here, or you can choose to put an extra piece of paper in here to cover up any note that you wrote. And we put this over. Now if you happen to close this and seal it ahead of time and then remembered you forgot to put your note in, this envelope can be reopened. So I just peeled my little protection off of there and you can see that little sticky spot of glue. And when I fold this over, I fold it down so it's even with the postcard. I don't worry too much about these wrinkles, they're gonna be okay. But if you don't like the wrinkles or you forgot to put your little note in, you can gently go ahead and just peel this back. I find if I leave this on the table and I fold it down this way, that I can get a nice seal and it doesn't have as many wrinkles as if I were holding it up in the air like I just did. You're gonna feel that this is a little pillowy. You can just kind of push down to the right and a little bit of that air will come out. It's not gonna affect anything as it's going through the mail. It's going to be perfectly safe. So here we have our postcard. It has that plastic envelope over it now to protect it. You also received your little adhesive label here. You're gonna put your return address up here and you're going to put your person you're shipping it to down there and your little stamp's gonna go in the corner. Now you can write on these with Sharpies. I have not tried them through a printer. These are meant to be written on. They're not the thermal paper ones. I just usually write mine with just a regular type of a ink pen, but you can use a Sharpie if you want. If I were to write on this with a Sharpie, I would go ahead and write everything out first. Let it sit down for a little while so that it dries because you don't want to smear it at all when we put it on. Now you can make sure that your card is right side up and then flip it over. But if it's upside down, it's still gonna ship the same. It's not gonna really matter because once your recipient opens it, they're not gonna notice if your label's upside down or not. These are adhesive, so when you peel them off, you just wanna be careful that it doesn't go back and touch itself. If it does a little bit, you can usually untack it. But as you're peeling it, if you peel it down this way versus from this side over, I find that if I peel them this way, it tends to wanna curl back on itself. But if I hold my fingers here, and I just peel it off this way, that it doesn't curl around itself. Because when I peel it this way, it all wants to get all curly and whirly that way. So we just peel it from the longest edge down to the longest edge. I'm just gonna line it up in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. The post office is not gonna complain if it's crooked. I like to put the shiny side down. I don't know if it makes a difference, it's just what I do. And that way I can go ahead and press it so if the ink was wet at all, that I'm not like rubbing it with my hand and smearing it everywhere. You just let it dry for a minute or two and then you won't have to worry about the ink. I just go ahead and I press all the edges to make sure it's sealed. And then you can go ahead and put your stamp on it. Now you could put a US stamp if you're here in the US, that's where I am, I'm in Florida. And I can mail this anywhere across my country for that price of that forever stamp. And then putting the stamp up here and having this paper address label here, it allows the post office to go ahead and cancel it. If you had some type of a fabric postcard where it was made out of fabric on the back, they have a hard time canceling it. With the cardboard version, you're okay. But by putting it in this clear envelope and putting on the adhesive paper label, we're able to write all over it. We could put our stamp on it and it could be canceled. These postcards can easily be sent internationally. Currently, they are $1.15 as of April 2020, and I can now ship this postcard anywhere in the world. I have shipped it to Canada. It's gone over to England. It's gone to Africa, Australia. I recently sent some to Russia. You can send them anywhere. I haven't had an issue at all. I talked to the postmaster general guy at my post office. I'm not sure if that's his name, but I talked to the manager at the post office. I'm gonna put some links up in the iCard for you to check it out. There's some links up there, a playlist on how to make fabric postcards, and specifically a video up there where I talk about speaking to the manager at the post office. He said this is the best way to send your postcard. As I mentioned, it allows you to cancel it. This plastic envelope that's clear so you could see the beauty of your postcard, it allows it to go through the machines. It won't tear up their machines. I don't put any buttons or beads or anything on the postcards that are meant to go through the mail. That way they can easily ship. One of the guidelines is, is to send it from the US to any country except for Canada 
this has to lay less than one ounce. And this postcard weighs 0.7 ounces, including that extra piece of paper that we put in there. Now remember, this is a postcard, it's not a letter, it's not a regular envelope to ship a letter. So just a little quick note is fine, but you don't want to write a whole entire letter of two or three sheets of paper. Those are meant to go in standard envelopes. Their other guideline is it has to be less than a quarter inch thick. And that's why I don't put any beads or buttons or anything else on it. This tool has actually got a space that's a quarter of an inch. And this is the guideline for mailing your cards. So it's going to fit in with plenty of room to spare. I don't know if you could see that there, but you can easily put this in with that one sheet of paper. It would take a computer sheet or a regular sheet of notebook paper and you would be fine. And then you can ship this to a friend or family member anywhere you want across the world. So thank you for purchasing one of my fabric postcards. I hope this answered any questions you may have about shipping your fabric postcard. If you have any more, please go ahead and contact me through my email listed or through my shop contact. Any information you need for contacting me is down below in this video. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.